Hi there. Uh, welcome to my podcast. Uh, this is show and tell day, um, mostly of things that I didn't make, but were given to me to work on or to send to someone else or whatever. I belong, as many of you who watch this podcast know, I'm part of a church group that does something called Stitch and Go. It's uh, charity sewing mostly, uh, but we also have uh, gained uh, some local fame uh, as a result of our work. And uh, as a result of that, I think we've become a bit of a, I don't want to call it dumping ground. That's not exactly the right word, but certainly a resource for people looking to let go of things where a seamstress or a knitter or a crocheter or so and so forth and so on have passed away. And, you know, I've talked about this before uh, on an episode called I Knit Dead People. Uh, being the recipient of yarn or fabric or whatever of someone who has passed is at one, on one side of the coin, uh, a privilege. And on the other side of the coin, in many cases, it feels like you're a garbage person. Uh, a trash person, a, a landfill. And so um, I have a bunch of things that some of which were um, hoisted upon me <laughs> and uh, some other things that were put down on the free table uh, to take and which I did take because I know I can find a home for them. Um, so I'll start off by talking about one of the things that I have made this week. Uh, I've talked about this last week. Uh, Stitch and Go is doing things for a hospital in town. And this hospital is looking to do a photo shoot with babies who have graduated from uh, their neonatal ICU. And so these babies are um, not preemies anymore. They uh, come out of that uh, intensive care situation and it's a time to celebrate happy babies, et cetera. And for some reason, and I, they're doing some sort of theme where the babies are wearing uh, AirSats headphones. And so I came up with the idea. One of the, I, one of the pictures that was sent to me in asking me to make these was a little plastic headband that was crocheted over and then these little crocheted earphones put over the end of the headbands. And it, I just thought that was fraught with difficulty because of fit and because it could poke the baby in the eye and it might not stay on and that frust that's frustrating for the photographer. So I came up with cotton hats and this is the first one. I purchased these online and um, box of six and crocheted in acrylic yarn, uh, off black acrylic yarn, two little circles and a strip and two little circles here and sewed this with thread needle and thread uh to this little cotton hat and if you and the band is sewn on quite loosely with just a couple of stitches so that when the hat goes on it stretches out to fit the hat to fit the head and and this is there's no pins or anything any kind of knots inside the hat so this can be popped on a baby's head take the picture take it off if necessary and, and ha hopefully have as little tears and anguish as possible because photographing newborns, which essentially I think that's what this is going to be. These babies will be the size of newborn babies um, having survived. Uh, and it's quite a celebration. Uh, babies that come out of NICU is it's, it's a lovely thing. Um, so I have, uh, finished all, all the big circles and I know how many stitches this needs 48 or 49 stitches and I'll finish the little ones and but I wanted to take a prototype yesterday was was our stitch and go meeting I wanted to make sure I finished one um, and these hats they're in six different pastelish colors uh, unisex like like peach and no pinks um, but they'll they'll there's a peach and a white and a and this is green and then so they'll fit any baby and uh, they can pick the color by the baby the baby's coloring and see what 
what is going to look good on the baby and put them on. So I'll finish these uh, in the next two weeks and give these to the uh, contact for the hospital at Stitch and Go. The other thing I've been doing this week, just a little off topic from knitting, is I've been doing postcards to voters. And these are going, um, this one's going to voters in Ohio. This is from a group called Postcards to Swing States. And uh, this postcard is going, is coming from a group called um, Moms Rising. And it says, um, we love our kids more than anything. Vote for our freedoms, our families, our futures. These are nonpartisan cards being mailed to registered Democrats. And uh, in, in various states, um, I, most of mine from this group have been going to Virginia and M Michigan. Um, and all of these have been going, of course, to Ohio because they're Ohio cards. So um, I think I'm going to get to 100 this month. I finished um, all of the Ohio cards and I did three packages, which is I did 75 of the of the uh, mom's ones today. So um, I'm not showing the back because it's people's addresses, but and I. It makes me feel good to reach out and tell people how much we appreciate them voting and to go vote. Uh, they are not, we're not allowed on those postcards to mention a candidate. It is about encouraging turnout. So grateful to be able to do that. All right. So <clears throat> yes, we receive at Stitch and Go a lot of stuff from people who have passed away, from the families of people who have passed away um, in order to uh, you know, get rid. People are trying to get rid of it. People are trying to clean out um, stuff from their deceased loved ones. And sometimes it's lovely uh, stuff. I'm going to show you some quilt blocks, and I've got to be careful with these because uh, they are, I think, fabric glued down. I think that, uh, that a fabric glue was used to put these together. They're not stitched yet, but you can see how gorgeous. There are nine of these in the bag, finished to this extent. Um, there's this one. I'm going to show you the the other one. This, this here's one. This one I believe is the center of the quilt. Just glorious and this one I, I, there's like I said there's there's nine of these and uh, I am mailing these to my sister who is a quilter and whose quilts and whose quilting work and sewing work often wins blue ribbons at her county fair um, she is an eight-year survivor of bone cancer, and uh, she has kept sewing through all of that. And uh, she sews for charity. Um, and I'm sure this will. Uh, I hope this will go back back to me. That's what I want her to do. I want her to sew it up and give it to me. But whatever she decides to do with it, um, and I don't know whether this fits into her life to do this right now, but. I know she'll like to look at it, and uh, I'm going to send it to her. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to send it to her um, because I know she'll appreciate it, and I'm not demanding that she do anything with it. It's a lot of work, but I know she'll appreciate seeing it. The other thing I'm going to send her is this little box, and in this little box are many, I have not counted, many of these little quilted stars um, in different colors. Uh, they, they have been pieced. That's what they're, it's called piecing. They, they, this, these haven't been quilted. They've just been pieced. And there are a great many of them. Here she said red 21. So there's 21 apparently of, of this red piecing. Uh, and then um, they also have in the envelope in the box excuse me the start of a piece of how this goes of how this quilt is supposed to go together um, with 
you know, octagons, plain octagons holding it together. This is the only part of it that is actually stitched. And let me look and see if this is hand stitched or machine. Oh gosh. It's machine stitched. Okay. Well, no, maybe not. It, th this might be hand stitched. Good Lord. Um, it's very even. It's hard to tell. Uh, it looks hand stitched. Okay. Looks like the person has sewn these together by hand. And the thing that for, I saw this and I looked at it and I realized, okay, the fabrics that are in here, the fabrics that are in this box, here's another one that says green 19. Okay, so there's 19 of these green ones. And the fabrics in this box scream vintage. And so, and, and, my sister has, has made uh, little yo-yo quilts and has done things with uh, antique yarn and, and then reproduction or antique yarn, antique fabric and also reproduction fabric of, you know, fabric from the thirties that's reprinted because making quilts along those lines is really a popular thing to do. I found an envelope in this um, box. This is just a little box of this quilt, um, all these little quilt pieces. And in here, in this little envelope are some unsewn cutouts to continue the work. And on this envelope, it says box holder, rural route to Virginia, Illinois, ILL, -L, no zip, no nothing. And I'm hoping you can see this. The postmark is 1939. And I looked at the one and a half cent stamp. I looked that up. That stamp is worth a little under $4. So I'm sending that to my sister as well. Just, I'm not going to mess with it. Um, so there's an envelope in there with a stamp of 1939. Yeah. Um, there's also a cardboard piece of the pattern to cut out for the octagons. And again, I looking at I just want to look at this one more time. I it's so even and such small stitches, it's hard to see if it's um machine stitched. I you know, parts of it I look at it and I go absolutely machine stitched and maybe the the angles pieces were done by hand. Some of the smaller angles. Uh but I mean, this is amazing work and a, and a treasure and a privilege to have this box. So, um, and to have these quilted pieces. I mean, these uh, nine squares of pieced and, and basted. And, and I think it's liquid basting. That's a much newer project, that big, those big pieces. Um, they, were, they were put together with some sort of liquid bonding to piece together and then the idea is to sew that those pieces in place <clears throat> and piece them together, etc. So, so both of those things are going to my sister. Um, and then uh, going from the sublime to the absurd, <laughs> not really, I don't mean to be cruel, um, but the things that are hoisted on me by the Stitch and Go folks are... Um, acrylic unfinished acrylic afghans and sometimes i say okay yeah this one is worth putting together and i'll do it eventually or it'll go in my closet so that when i have some time between projects or whatever if i'm traveling and i just want to sew together granny squares then i can take that with me and do it um this woman, whoever she was, made squares for Warm Up America, which are, um, you know, brown acrylic. Okay. Um, and, and I found out on the web that Warm Up America, which is a group that puts together blankets for needy people, um, 
that they're still accepting them. So the 48 squares, and they're not all just garter stitch. There's some uh, basket weave knitting, and these are, this is quality work. It's not, you know, I'm not crapping on people. Uh, but there's 48 squares here that never got sewn together, that never got sent to Warm Up America, and the family was left to leave it with us. And I looked at it and said, that those are Warm Up America squares. Yes, I'll take them home and research what's happening with Warm Up America, and I'll, I'll see if they will still take them, and apparently they will. So I've got the address, and I've, the return address is the church, and I'm going to send those to Warm Up America and get them out of here. Uh, the other ones, all right. Uh, I, I, I haven't counted these and, uh, they don't feel good and I, they don't feel good. They feel, uh, like plastic. Um, this yarn <coughs> has a sticker on it from Ben Franklin, uh, which is a store that has not been in Springfield since I moved here in 2008 so this project is at least 16 years old, but I, su I would suggest it's much older than that. It's been sitting in a grocery bag for a very long time. And uh, that is sad. Um, I am probably going to thrift store this, uh, which makes me feel a little guilty, but uh, I don't have time to work on it and I don't have time to mess with it. And maybe someone will sew it together uh, if, if I had all the time in the world, I'd sew it together and make a pet blanket out of it and give it to the APL, give it to the Animal Protective League, but I don't. Um, and then the, the last one, is there another one? No, I guess this is it. Last one is Baby Granny Squares, which are knit very small, very fine gauge, and I'm still figuring out. I've counted these. There's 24 finished ones of various uh, colors, mostly solids, although there's some, uh, you know, the, the pink and blue, but um, mostly solids. Uh, I might make this a Lenten project. <laughs> I'll sew these together for Lent. <laughs> and uh, the thing is about these baby blanket things is, uh, the youth director of our church, if I finish this and wash it and make it soft, um, we'll give it to someone whose baby is being baptized at our church. So that I know this will have a home where it will be given as a precious gift to someone who has uh, invited the congregation to welcome their baby into the world. So that's nice. And, and knowing that there's, there's an end point for this project where it will be appreciated at least by the, the youth director, <laughs> you know, I know she will go, Oh, this is fantastic. We have a baby being baptized, you know, this month, this will be the thing that the church gives to the baby. Fantastic. Um, you know, that means, that means, yeah. Okay. That's worth, that's worth a little of my time to do that. So um, it is, like I said, a privilege to work on uh, some of, to, to have some of these things that people clearly worked on and uh, devoted their talent to. And at the same time, um, it's important not to be, well, let me put it this way. I was thinking about this today. When my son, my oldest his son, went off to college, um, I cleaned out his room. And I had to clean out his room because uh, his sisters had shared a room for a long time, and they were finally each going to have their own room, and it was time to clear out the junior dude's junk. And he had treated it like a garage, and that's fine. Um I had to go through, while he was away for the summer working, I had to go through 
and figure out what to keep, and what to get rid of, what to make sure he had, because there were things I knew were important to him. And I had consulted him a little bit, but I wasn't going to consult him all that much because he was going off to college and, and that mattered. Um, but as I'm doing this, uh, the temptation to take extra, extra time to make sure that everything found a home at a thrift store or at a donation place or, you know, there were things that I absolutely knew I could donate right away. Um, but there were old notebooks, which had crap in them, not, nothing personal writing, just scribbles or weren't written in and were old and and had soda spilled on them. And so, I mean, just stuff that was junk. And okay, but it's paper. Should I have it recycled or should I just throw it away or should I whatever? Well, his room was already a landfill. And I think sometimes we get so ecologically concerned and we should be given, you know, cat three in Florida is happening. The, the environment matters. Um, but our homes, if our homes get to the point of being a landfill, we're not fixing anything. And so I gave myself permission to, to clear things. And a tremendous amount. I, I segregated all of the scholastic books that he had from all the scholastic uh, book fairs at school. And those all went to a uh, library in a uh, apartment complex, an apartment complex, the community had started a, a library for the kids within that complex. And that was a treasure to send to them. And I knew since every book had the word scholastic on it, um, I could just box those up and say, look, these are scholastic books. And if you have a problem with one of them, it's not my problem. <laughs> Take it up with scholastic. Um, and so just don't, I, I'm not going to let my, my house become a, a dump for, uh, because someone made this, you know, so, because someone made this out of yarn that's at least 17 years old. I mean, I'm, I am going to give this to the thrift store and maybe someone will sew it together for maybe orange and brown. It's absolutely coming back. And this is, you know, this is absolutely a treasure to somebody else. It might be. So one person's trash is another person's treasure. Isn't that what they say? Uh, but I'm not keeping it. <laughs> um, and, and the other thing that came across my screen this week uh the woman who uh does the 333 project uh and be more with less.com she does a newsletter every saturday of favorite links and um one of them mentioned it had a website called the simplicity habit.com talking about reverse decluttering and I thought it was a really interesting idea to think of in terms of knitting projects. Reverse decluttering, uh, if, you, if you think of decluttering as I have to get rid of stuff, reverse decluttering focus on, focuses on I want to keep this. And coming up with a pile or a group or a bin where, yes, these projects matter to me. And, it, you know, it's sort of Marie Kondo a little bit, um, putting everything out and figuring out, okay, you, and you can, you can turn it into an emergency if you need to of the house is on fire, what are you going to take with you? But, uh, you know, thinking just, you don't have to go that far. You can think about, okay, so here's, here's four blanket projects. Which one do I really love and want to finish? Or do I have, you know, I, I have a baby at the church that, would love this or that the, the youth minister would appreciate me doing this. Um, you know, I, I, I know there's a, a recipient for this or I love knitting socks. So I knit a pair of socks a month. So my sock yarn collection, we're going to set that aside because I have absolute, um, you know, justification for owning that yarn. Uh, because it's always looked at, it's always used. 
I'm always picking one and, and finishing a project that month with that yarn. But sweaters and oddballs, especially, that's the thing for me, is non-sock yarn oddballs, because I can make a hat of the, out of that someday. And my guild is going to, as they have done for a few years now, be making hats for the homeless and, and other needy populations. This is for Christmas. Uh, there's a there's an avenue for getting those to a place where they will be don't be used and distributed. So we already have a path from the needles to the recipient. That's I think that's so important. Um, so people people in my guild will be knitting hats, and I have bagged up and boxed up uh, a lot of hat kits with a free pattern in them, and I'm going to take them to guild and say, if you don't want to go through your stash and you'd like to knit a hat here there's a pattern there's the yarn for it and a ziploc bag take it and then what's left over uh you know i'm gonna decide how many hats am i gonna knit this year two <laughs> you know, i'm gonna knit two hats that, for christmas for, to give away um or i'm gonna knit for my kids and I've, I've talked about that that i will be knitting hats this year for my kids because i'm not gonna knit them sweaters because they they appreciate the hats so much more so yeah um I'm going to get rid of, find find a home, whether it's thrift store or stitch and go or guild uh, for these hat kits. And, you know, maybe I'll just do a hat kit giveaway on this podcast. Or let me know in comments if you'd like a hat kit because um, I'll probably have leftovers and we can, I can certainly work out something where I ship you guys a hat kit. No problem. Um, okay. Enjoy your week. All is well here, um, praying for Florida. I have family in Gainesville, and they are um, welcoming many refugees from uh, other parts of the state, from Tampa, et cetera. Uh, grateful that at this moment, it has dropped from a Cat 5 to a Cat 3. I am not grateful for a Cat 3 hurricane in any way, but uh, certainly glad that it's uh, less powerful a storm than it was when it was in the Gulf. My God. And uh, I will see you next time. Uh, pray for Florida. Pray for Ukraine. Uh, pray for our country. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.